And I think it's really that simple. I don't think it's difficult. I don't think it's that hard. And some of us may think this. And just for time's sake, I'm going to rush through this. Some of us may think, well, you know what? The trouble is that works for those maybe who were... Uh, who have done most things right. That worked for those people who have been raised in church. That works for those people who don't have a meth problem, who are not addicted to this or not addicted. That works for those people. No, I'm telling you, it works for everyone in the room. I'm saying it works. He works for everyone. It's not just those who li- whose uh, uh, income is this or lives in this or that neighborhood. It's for every person in this room. And listen, the the example, the biblical example, one that we could use is 2 Samuel 11. You don't have to turn there, but it's the story of Bathsheba. And you know that David is tempted. He sees. And then from, from that, he ends up having an affair. From that, there's a child. From that, he's a murderer. And then you just have to look in Psalms 51, and David writes... This, and I'm just briefly going to go through it. He asked God to blot out his transgressions, wash him thoroughly, cleanse him from his sin. He lets God know, like God didn't already know, against you I have sinned. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart. Do not cast me away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. So listen, I'm going to tell you this. If you're in the room... And you can hear what I'm saying, and I'm almost finished, so just pay attention for a couple more minutes. There is David who has done it all. You know, I mean, he is a murderer. He is an adulterer. He has given in to the lust, and then he asked for forgiveness. That's the Psalm 51, is the, one, is the Psalm of David writing to God, saying what I just read to you. And then if you fast forward to Acts 13, Acts 13, 22, God says this of David. After all that has taken place, God says this. David is a man after my own heart. That is the God that we serve. A man who had messed up totally. So listen, if you can hear me and you've messed up totally, then join David and say, God, forgive me. Wash me water than snow. Restore my salvation. And God's going to say about you, you're a person after his own heart. That's the God that we serve. (coughs) He is that good of a God that can forgive you and forgives me of everything I've ever done. And listen, because you know what he's saying? What the songs that we just, the, the video that we just watched, Every beating that he took, he didn't have to take it. He took it for you, and he took it for me. He took it for David, and he knew everything that David was... He knows all. He's not surprised by what you did last night or or what you did last week. He's not surprised what I did this past week. God's not going to go, I never thought he would do that. I did not know that was going to happen. So really, the beating that I took, I really took it for everybody, but it doesn't work that way. But listen, now, it takes the right heart. It's not this thing I live like whatever Monday through whatever and then I go here and then somebody's on the other side of the screen and they chant something or another and then you go out and live like the devil again. That's not how it works. That's the wrong heart. You have to listen to David. You have to read Psalm 51 and and, and truly understand David's heart. That's the heart you have to have. It's not this. God is not to be used. He's not to be mocked. But he's there to forgive you if you have the right heart. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. If we want the world to be different, if we want Coleman to be different, Coleman County to be different, if we want Hansville to be different, then it rests on our shoulders. It is not, it is not, God could have, could have, Chosen any way he wanted because he's God. To introduce others to his love. But he chose you. And he chose me. So it's not, listen, you know as well as I do. We can't depend on politicians to get it right. They're only going to mess it up worse. It's not, well, if this guy had been president or whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It does. But if you wait on government, then give up. 
All right? If you're waiting on government to fix it, just give up. But it's not up to the, it's not to fix the world, to fix Coleman is not up to the government. It's up to you, and it's up to me. It's up to Crosshaven Church to be the church, to be the Christian that God called us to be and introduce him to a messed up world, and that's how the world gets fixed. It doesn't get fixed with a new tax plan. It doesn't get fixed with a tax cut. It doesn't get fixed with a new drug czar. It doesn't get fixed with those things. Listen. We know no, enough about meth addiction that, in my opinion, to know this. The only fix is Jesus Christ. That's the only fix. And listen, he's called on you individually and me individually and us collectively to fix that problem. Know this. God loves you enough that no matter your sin, what I have written here is your sin is no match for God's grace. Your sin is no match for God's grace. So I want you to know this. I want you to take full advantage because that's where, that's where I have kind of been. It's kind of like being stuck in the mud in a four-wheel drive with a winch that will pull down the building tied to the front and just staying stuck in the mud and not taking full advantages of all the buttons and all the whistles that's on whatever it is that you're stuck in the mud in. We serve a God that is so personal, knows you so intimately that, that all we have to do is take a full advantage with the right heart and the right mind and we can, we can move forward. But listen, you and I have to make the agreement to go forward and to serve as God was have, would have us to serve. But the most important thing is be in the right heart to serve. So listen, I'm just going to say this. If you are in the building and you are not 100% in... It's not any kind of quirky, but if you are not 100%, do not, do not leave without knowing that you have him on your side. Do not leave without taking full advantage of what it means to be adopted by Christ. So if that's what you need to get straightened out, do that today. Get that straightened out and then make the pledge, make the promise, make the commitment that you're going to go forward and you're not going to complain about how things need to be. And we're going to, as a church, continue what we're doing and say this. Our doors need to be open. Not only do they need to be open, that church, and I don't know what church it is, and it may be a, so I may be going to step on a toe, but there's a bumper sticker out there that says, Come and see. It, it ain't got nothing to do with coming. We have to go. They're already, because of that stiff-necked guy that was in McDonald's, they're not going to come and see because that's what they're looking at. So we have to take his love to them and show him why you and I are different. And we have to live like we're different. So listen, I'm going to pray, and then I think we have a, a song that maybe we can close with, Jake. Am I right about that? Or... Oh, there you are. Sorry. Is that okay with you? Is that good? All right. So we're going to pray, and then listen. While we pray and while the song plays, I want you, our pastor is here, obviously, and uh, there's other folks here that will be glad to pray with you. Just get that right. The most important. What I said is all useless if you don't take full advantage of his love and his forgiveness. So do that as the song plays if that's what you need to do. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this privilege. God, I, the opportunity that you've given, we are thankful. God, for the calling that you've placed on each person's life, we are thankful. God, for, for just being a God that we can't grasp, for being a God that loves us beyond our understanding of the word love, we thank you for that. God, not, do not let I, whatever you have to do, Whatever you have to do in a person's life, open their hearts and open their minds to be acceptable to your salvation. 
open to, to your love, to your free gift, and then let them join with other Christians to go out and make sure the world changes to better reflect your love. So God, again, I love you, and I thank you for the opportunity. It's your name that I pray, that we pray. Amen.